I didn't intend on reviewing Furiosa because I'm unfamiliar with the series. Besides a few trailers, I don't really know anything about the film, since Mad Max interests me about as much as drying paint. Then I heard about Furiosa's box office bombing as the worst Memorial Weekend performance in 29 years. Even positive reviews received backlash like Critical Drinker's take being thrashed online despite his enjoyment of the film. At this point, I was intrigued and wanted to know more despite my lack of knowledge, which gives me an unbiased position to ask the question, does Furiosa deserve the box office failure? Let's find out. Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, is a prequel to Fury Road, being an origin story of the titular Furiosa opening in her home, which is apparently the Kokiri Forest in the middle of the Gerudo Desert. For anyone unaware, Mad Max is set in a post-apocalyptic Australia in the not-so-distant future, brought about by nuclear fallout. Oil reserves are rare and invaluable, second only to water, fought over by factions that have arisen after the bombs fell. In this secret oasis, Furiosa and her sister Valkyrie spot raiders, and in her attempt to disable their bikes, Furiosa is kidnapped, and her mother gives chase. The rescue was in vain, though, as Furiosa's mother is killed, and she becomes prisoner to Chris Hemsworth's Dementus, the leader of a roving band of raiders. Eventually, Dementus and his forces challenge Immortan Joe at the Citadel, but the frontal assault fails, so Dementus instead works out a deal with Immortan Joe to rule over Gastown, which is a nearby base built on top of a massive oil reserve, and it's surprising that the U.S. hasn't invaded. As part of the deal, Furiosa is kept in the Citadel, until many years later when she attempts to flee, gets caught up in a few major set pieces because of contrivances, and attempts to survive in the wasteland, caught in the middle of conflict between the ever-devolving Dementis, whom Furiosa seeks revenge on, and the tyrannical Immortan Joe. This movie is a mixed bag, so let's start with the positives. Oh, and spoilers for those who care. The biggest strength of Furiosa is the show-don't-tell approach. It's nice to see a movie that avoids dumping exposition on the audience in the hopes that you can keep up with it without an encyclopedia. Being new to the Mad Max franchise myself, I was worried I needed a primer before going in. Thankfully, that wasn't necessary. Character motivations are clear, and while there are variables adding to someone's goals, like Furiosa's developed relationship with Jack, that doesn't mean their objectives change. There are also so few characters and locations, you'd have to intentionally mislead yourself to not learn or recognize which character or location is being discussed. Now, being the prequel to Fury Road with George Miller once again writing and directing, it makes sense this film is going to have big action scenes, and it certainly does. The scenes are well choreographed and long. Frankly, a little too long, considering how many people appear out of thin air. The centerpiece of the film being on the big rig keeps going after almost three waves of raiders have been eliminated. I like big action scenes, especially ambitious single takes like the restaurant fight in The Protector that makes sense given the immediate proximity of thugs in the restaurant. But in Furiosa, no raiders will be visible for a mile, then spawn in like this was a scripted sequence of fights in a video game. Now, this is the dumbest but perhaps most relevant point to make, that Furiosa is not woke. Nor is she a girl boss. I'm sure this is one of the variables in Furiosa's box office failure, as the movie is a prequel that doesn't feature the franchise's titular character. I'd be concerned about that as well, but I can happily say politics are not present in the film. Furiosa herself is vulnerable, receiving almost as much help as she offers, and still gets messed up. Furiosa's missing her left arm in Fury Road, but clearly has it here, so if that implication doesn't help settle that she isn't untouchable in the movie, I don't know what will. With the positives discussed, let's get into the negatives, beginning with the CGI. I know many people, myself included, use exaggeration to make a sarcastic point like any comedian does, but when the CGI switches quality mid-scene like anime does artists, it's jarring. Many shots look fine if a bit cartoony, like the explosion around Furiosa at the gate to Bullet Town, but Almost as many shots are so obviously on green screen, you can't help but wonder where the 168 million production budget went. Besides some shots looking uncanny as a robot sex doll, which is general for today, there is also really jagged pathing. For those who don't know, there are many ways to move an object on screen. Paths are smooth, and usually what we see in movies and games, but lots of objects in Furiosa seem to be moved with unrefined keyframes, which are specific moments in a timeline to manipulate an object. The moment that sticks out to me is when a goon standing on a bike is moved with a crane and unironically looks like this. 
So to say the least, Furiosa is not the best looking movie. Another constant issue is the sound mixing. Perhaps it is just me, but there are multiple moments throughout the movie in which either someone is talking way quieter than they should be, or is unintelligible despite being the only person speaking. In case of the former, you'll have people holding a normal inside voice when surrounded by explosions, roaring engines, gunfire, and more. For the unintelligible point, this mostly falls on Dementis and Immortan Joe. I don't know who the hell thought Chris Hemsworth needed to exaggerate an Australian Glenn Quagmire, but here we are. Lady and gentlemen, start your engines! Hemsworth becomes hard to understand when he's talking through this microphone like his arrival at the Citadel. This moment in particular was hard to understand, so I just waited for the scene to play out before retroactively figuring out what he said. And then Immortan Joe, with a mask strapped to his face, but half the time it doesn't seem to have a good mic? When he raises his voice to silence others? Great, no problem. But when he speaks in a normal octave? Same thing as Hemsworth on his megaphone. I couldn't really understand him. Now, the biggest problem with Furiosa is how the plot plays out because of contrivance and convenience. Going back to the plot summary, when Furiosa is kidnapped, as mentioned, her mother is in pursuit. She's making shots on these raiders like she's got Chinese aimbot installed. After one raider dies, another peers over the dune to find that her mother hasn't crested the hill that she should have taken the shot from, which means Furiosa's mom shot a moving target through the dunes without visual all while driving. She pulls this off multiple times. Not to mention, we're made to believe that Dementis' forces are so incompetent they didn't communicate to the camp which direction they were traveling in in the first place. The raiders leave the camp, find the green place, return back, but no one at the camp knew where the scouts went. They weren't ordered to travel in a particular direction. Like, the amount of information missing from the first chapter of Furiosa is glaring and doesn't hold up to scrutiny. More examples like these happen throughout the movie. Furiosa is underneath the big rig, hoping to escape escape with supplies, but we're supposed to ignore her hopes that no one spots her either in the middle of the drive to Gastown or from within it. Later, when Furiosa and Jack are captured and tortured by Dementis, we're supposed to believe Furiosa ripped off her own arm, stole a motorcycle, and escaped Dementis and his goons when she was surrounded by them without anyone noticing? Like, please, big action set pieces only go so far. You have to have solid writing here. So... There you have it. I'm not all that impressed with Furiosa, but I can say it is certainly nowhere near as bad as it could have been. In a similar manner to Fallout, though to be clear Furiosa is leagues better, there are elements I enjoy, and it is a shame that this film flopped as hard as it has. I don't believe Furiosa is deserving of the financial failure, despite its flaws, but I think this speaks to the much greater issues facing the United States today let alone the world. This is an election year. The economy is historically terrible with out-of-control inflation, rates aren't going down, and much, much more. So, people either worked through the weekend like I do, or wanted to spend time with their family. Tag on the expressed concerns from earlier, such as the perceived girl boss, and it makes sense why Furiosa bombed. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.